Hello, everybody. I would like to thank the organizers of this uh, webinar, and I will uh, give you a lecture on COVID-19 vaccine safety, short and long term. First, to set up the scene, I would like to remind you of the eight types of vaccines currently developed in the setting of COVID-19. First of all, the nucleic acid vaccines, RNA and DNA, and um, I wanted to highlight this paper from Colorway Nature 2020, where you can find a lot of information regarding this, the design of all vaccines. The second type of vaccine uh, are the ones with viral vectors, replicating vectors or non-replicating vector. The third is um, the virus vaccine uh, with weakened or unactivated vaccine. And um, finally, the protein-based vaccines, protein subunits or virus-like particles. And I will particularly highlight the nucleic acid vaccine RNA and, vaccine, and viral vector vaccines and non-replicating vectors because those vaccines are the ones that are, um, that are now uh, commercialized. So first of all, the RNA-based nucleic acid vaccines. Uh, here you have um, the mechanism of action of those vaccines and two of them are currently commercialized, the Cominati and uh, the Moderna. And I will focus uh, my talk uh, on, on the safety of those vaccines. So first, the safety of concomionati from phase two, three clinical trials. Um, just to remind you the number of patients included in the trials, um, almost 40,000 patients where we could get uh, the short and midterm um, uh, side effects and safety. So um, in, those, uh, in those trials, only uh, quite moderate, mild to moderate um, side effects have been noted. So you see here the pain at injection site, redness and swelling. And um, you have on the left side of the slide, uh, the, the, the side effects according to age, 16 to 55, and on the right, over uh, 55 years of age. And you see that um, the only real side effect that has been noted uh, in um, in the clinical trial phase two and three are the pain at injection site. And uh, this, those, um, the side effects have been noted less uh, at the second dose. Then if we focus on the systemic events, age 15 to 55 here, you see that um, the fever, fatigue, headache, and shields, as well as muscle pain and joint pain were the main side effects noted. And here again, that was more noted uh, at, with the second dose. Now, if we focus on the age over 55, you see that here again, the side effects have been noted more with the second dose and it was mainly fatigue, headache, chills and muscle pain and a bit less than in younger subjects as shown in the previous slides. If we switch now to the safety of Moderna, again, from clinical trials, um, I've put here the number of patients included in those phase two, three trials with the Moderna vaccine, and this is the local events. And as you see, um, all age, uh, it's um, mainly pain, a little bit of lymphadenopathy. And uh, the number of side effects have been noted about the same with the first and second dose of vaccine. And if we focus now on systemic events, again, with the Moderna vaccine, um, the side effects have been noted more with the second dose and mainly fatigue, headache, chills, myalgia, and arthralgia. I wanted to share with you uh, the side effects that have been noted with the use of those vaccines in France. Um, and this is the last report of side effects. And um, you see here with the Comir Nati that the side effects was more noted in the female subjects vaccinated, and uh, especially in patients under the age of 64. And the clinical events of interest were arrhythmia and above all hypertension, uh, of, um, about 100 cases of high hypertension, even in patients without history of hypertension, a few reactivation of first disaster, guillain barre syndrome and hematoma and thrombopenia, but nothing uh, of utmost importance. If we look at the Moderna uh, safety surveillance, you see that here again, most of the side effects have been noted in females and um, 
Opposite to, uh, to what we saw with COVID-19, the number of side effects were higher in patients above the age of 65. And the clinical events of interest were again arrhythmia, hypertension, and herpes zoster. So you see that in a wall, those vaccines are very well tolerated, short and midterm uh, safety. If we, if we switch now to um, the, the, the tolerability of uh, the community vaccine in the general population, I found two reports in the literature um, showing the safety profile when used outside of clinical trials. So first of all, this case series from Israel where 491 subjects with autoimmune rheumatic disease have been vaccinated and 90 were compared without any uh, rheumatic disease. Six cases of herpes zoster have been noted, all in the group of autoimmune uh, rheumatic disease, and that was only a monometameric herpes zoster, so nothing very, very serious. In another case series from Israel, the 144 patients with cancer and treated with immune checkpoint inhibitors have been matched with controls on age and gender. No autoimmune myositis have been noted in the patient vaccinated, and there was more muscle pain in patients uh, with cancer. That was the only difference in the safety profile. Regarding now uh, the viral vector vaccines with non-replicating vectors, you see here the mode of action of those vaccines, and only Three of them are currently on the market. One is approved um, in Europe, Vatzevria. One is, has been approved uh, as a Janssen vaccine, but not used for a reason I will tell you a little bit later. And the one from uh, Russia, the Sputnik V, is also a viral vector vaccine with non-replicating vectors, but I won't uh, say anything about the safety of this vaccine because it's not commercialized in Europe. So um, the focus of my talk um, on the viral vector vaccines will be on Vaxevria because this is the one that have been used for a few months now. So the safety of this vaccine from clinical trials um, is shown on this slide, especially the local events at first dose, because opposite to the, to the messenger RNA vaccines, this vaccine um, trigger side effects more with the first dose than the second dose, and the side effects are more noted at younger age, and it's mainly pain and tenderness as local events. If we switch to the systemic events, here again, those events were stronger at first dose than younger age, and they were only fatigue, headache, muscle ache, and malaise. So um, you see that the, the, the short-term uh, tolerability was uh, pretty good with this vaccine. But very recently, looking at the, the midterm uh, tolerability and safety, a few cases of thrombotic thrombocytopenia uh, have been noted after vaccination. And this is the first paper published mentioning those very rare but very severe side effects. And um, those, those uh, thrombosis events were quite unusual because they developed uh, mainly into the brain or the splenic system. And then um, after those first cases had been reported in Germany and Austria, a few others have been reported in, uh, in the UK. And uh, from this paper recently published, um, that um, a syndrome uh, have been identified close to autoimmune heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, although those patients did not use any heparin. So you see here is together uh, with the first paper from Grenacher reported the first death of a 49-year-old female worker and 11 subsequent cases of unusual thrombosis events and thrombocytopenia. Scully from the UK reported 23 more similar cases. And in fact, the pathogenicity um, of the side effects is very particular that the presence of activated antibodies against platelet factor four, PF4, whose origin is quite unclear. Is it the adenovirus itself? Because it has been seen uh, with other viruses or bacteria in the context uh, of a caplic shock. Um, is it a strong inflammatory stimulus induced by vaccination or antibodies induced uh, by vaccination that cross-react with platelet factor four and platelets? So um, the authors of 
those two papers uh, has uh, has um, proposed an algorithm to treat the patient with such a condition. So first, um, check after the vaccination if the patient has has had no hepatitis exposure, and if the patient has thrombocytopenia, thrombosis, or both five to 20 days after vaccination, and we should perform an immunoassay screening. If this immunoassay screening is negative, then we can treat the patient with heparin. If it's positive, uh, we should refer um, the patient uh, to a laboratory that can perform platelet activation test. And if uh, it's negative, then the heparin treatment can be used. If it's positive, then it's real diagnosis of vaccine-induced thrombotic thrombocytopenia. And we should not use uh, platelets or heparin, but more high dose intravenous immunoglobulin or anticoagulant outside of heparin and um, vitamin K um, antagonist or platelet transfusion or contraindicated in this condition. Here again, this is another kind of algorithm, a little bit simpler, um, where the test to be performed are the prothrombin time, activated partial thromboplastin time fibrinogen levels and the dimer levels. And if those tests are, are normal, then um, this is very unlikely to be vaccine-induced thrombosis or thrombocytopenia. But um, if they are not normal, and especially the dimer level very high, it might be a vaccine-induced thrombosis and thrombocytopenia. And then we should definitely avoid platelet transfusion, and we should um, administer IV immunoglobulin, uh, maybe use of glucocorticoid, and uh, do not use heparin. So the conclusions uh, of the PRAC uh, from uh, the European uh, Medicine Agency regarding Vaxevria is that uh, as of April, beginning of April, 169 cerebral venous sinus thrombosis and 63 splenic vein thrombosis have been noted over almost 40 million vaccinated subjects in Europe and the UK. Um, addition of those side effects, which are very rare, has to be done in the vaccine notice, but the benefit of those vaccines continue to outweigh the risk for people who receive it. So the vaccine is effective in preventing COVID-19, where the number of deaths of COVID-19 is very, very high and a lot higher than the risk of uh, thrombosis due to those vaccines. So the national authorities across Europe may provide additional guidance on the rollout of the vaccine based on the situation in their country. A very short notice regarding uh, the vaccine, uh, the vaccine uh, from Janssen, about the same cases of thrombosis have been noted. So uh, the deployment of the Janssen vaccine is currently halted in Europe. So to summarize my talk, millions of subjects in the US and Europe have been vaccinated with the four available vaccines, two messenger RNA and two viral vector-based vaccines. In countries where the majority of citizens have been vaccinated, a significant decrease in SARS-CoV-2 uh, incidence and decrease in mortality has been noted like in Israel, the UK, and the USA. And the safety short and midterm is so far very good with all vaccines. But there is a signal of thromboembolic disorders with adenovirus-based vaccines, and the benefit of mass vaccination right now greatly outweighs the risk of vaccine-associated adverse events. And the specific information should be given to subjects vaccinated with adenovirus-based vaccine, how to recognize signs of thromboembolic disorders and guidelines for specific management of vaccine-induced uh, thrombosis should be released at healthcare professionals' level. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm ready for the Q&A session.